Hey guys, how many of you artists out there get artist block? I get it all the time. I think to myself, I want to do a painting, but what do I paint? Today though is the exception, because on my trusty laptop, I've been looking through the internet and found this lovely lady. This is the famous actress Rebecca Ferguson dressed in costume for her leading role in the, the mini TV series White Queen. Here she is playing the part of Elizabeth Woodville. And I like this picture particularly because of the dramatic lighting. We've got a very strong cross light coming from the right, hitting her face and leaving the back of her head in dark shadow. And it's these effects that I love to portray. So Rebecca Ferguson, she's the one we're doing today. So that's more or less the drawing complete. You'll notice 
I go to quite a great deal of detail in my drawing. That's because I don't consider myself one of the best drawers, to be, to be truthful with you. Uh, and so, lots of artists will just do very quick outline, blocking in the main shapes, and then get on with the uh, the, ma the main painting. Uh, I like to achieve a semblance of a likeness and try to maintain that all the way through. Otherwise, if I just start painting a painting based on some sketchy outline, I might find later on when I'm painting details that I've got main structural problems to deal with. The main thing I've established uh, in the drawing is the actual perspective. You notice we've got this uh, quite a dramatic slant on the eye and uh, on the mouth and on the nostril and uh, also uh, we know that we're looking up at her from a low angle because first of all because of that perspective but also we can see underneath her jaw here because her head is slightly tilted away from us now the further the head tilts away the higher the ear will appear in the head and that's actually what, tell, what tells us that the head is tilting away uh, you'll notice that the ear has been left a little bit vague there because I'm not quite sure whether that's high enough up. I can play around with that later in the painting. But for now that will do and uh, we'll let that dry and come back in about four hours time to continue. Okay so to start with I would just like to address uh, a little issue that crops up from time to time. People often ask me in the comments on, on my videos uh, what colours I'm using and what, what colours I mix for this, that or the other. Technically it's a little bit difficult to show what you're doing on the canvas and also what you're doing down here. What, you, what I really need to do is to have a palette up vertical at the side of the painting like a lot of our YouTube artists do so that you can sleep, see me mixing the paint. So what I'm going to do here for now, this, this is my trusty old palette. I actually made this about 20 years ago. It's a piece of plywood with brackets fixed on uh, that just hook onto the uh, bottom of the um, easel and then a piece of 4mm uh, glass over there taped down and that's the mixing surface. Uh, so what I'm going to do, I'll mix up a little bit of basic flesh colour and I'll show you how we, how we do it. So I'm going to take some yellow ochre and some white some cadmium red and a tiny bit of blue a bit more and basically this just gives us a, a kind of orangey um, base to work from that's it and then so They'll do a little bit of green perhaps as well. Uh, these, this will do for the mid-tones. And then to make the, the, uh, the flesh tones lighter, you just mix in some, some white, like that. Clean the brush. And then to make it darker, <coughs> a little bit of burnt umber. And some light, some... Um, cadmium red. So basically those are my three tones. If the red needs to be a bit cooler then I'll use alizarin instead of uh, cadmium red. Sometimes add a little bit of green in the shadow areas of the face. So those are the basic colours I'm going to start with and initially I'm just going to paint in the, uh, the mid-tones and we'll take it from there. Uh, the colours I use are Titanium White, Burnt Umber, Alizarin Crimson, Cadmium Red, Yellow Ochre, Cadmium Yellow, Sap Green, Ultramarine Blue and Lamp Black. To be honest with you, I'm a bit of a traditionalist and I'm, I, I really do not like using black if I can get away with it. It's only when I really need some really dark passages that I use it. 
and even then it's always modified with the addition of perhaps yellow ochre or, or burnt umber just to take off that jet black look which is an unnatural look. You notice I do actually use paint quite sparingly, if that's the word. In other words, not very much paint. I tend to scumble paint onto the canvas rather than lay it in smoothly. It's just a technique I've always used.
Now, one of the errors that I made in the drawing stage is that the whole thing should have been about another inch further that way because this distance from here to here should be greater than the distance from there to there. The model should have looking room. But uh, the drawing was quite well advanced before I realised that so I decided to stick with it. And the way I shall overcome that is that I shall make the background just a, a plain darkish abstract background but where the light comes in in this direction and hits the face in this highlight here this background will be quite dark going up against the face so we'll have dark light and then the head will be dark here and shadow around the back and then the background will then be light so that will help to redress the balance and balance up all the uh, tonal values of the whole picture and help to give it some balance so I think uh, that will do for now I'm going to leave that there and uh, go and have a coffee and I'll come back later Well, I'm just mixing this colour. I'd just like to uh, explain why I use this method of doing a rough underpainting and then a top coat painting uh, when really you could just paint it in in one go. Well the fact is I'm on a learning curve like we all are. We're, we're all learning something new every day and um, I'm not very good at actually recognising a colour on my reference photograph and then mixing the exact right colour. So what I prefer to do is just to mix an approximate colour, apply that so that all the, the painting is completely covered with approximate colours and tones as you've heard me say. And then when I mix the final colour I can look at the passage I'm doing and think that needs to go a little bit lighter or a little bit darker or a little bit more green or a little bit more red or whatever it's a it's a kind of a guide for the final result and helps me to mix the the color that i really want Okay, so that's it now for this session. All my colours are blocked in, approximate colours, approximate tones. I'm going to let that dry now and then to tomorrow I'll come back and uh, do the finished refined top coat. So. Okay, 
So my first task is to cover the face with Liquin Original. The idea in this stage is to give the, the surface of the painting a much more finished and refined look. Then here <clears throat> a little bit lighter here, too light.
Now as we come across towards the cheek we've got that pinkiness coming into the, into the cheek so to, for that I'm going to add a little bit of alizarin in crimson. Like so. It starts to get a little darker down here as it turns away from the light and up here. Just going back to the nose, here's a little bit of darkness there. And there. Down there. And then here we're going to make this much darker but with some green added because in shadows you always get reflected light in shadows so you've got the ambient colour of the, uh, the space she's in and that green will be picked up in the shadows not only at the side of the face but also around this area as well. I painted this earlier on or yesterday uh, in this like, dark brown colour where it will it will eventually end up a, a darker green colour picked up from this uh, background. So here goes, that's uh, some dark colour here for the uh, underside of the cheekbone which has some sap green in it.
then we've got this this uh, band of collar that runs along the jaw band of shadow I should say roughly about here Probably worth mentioning, uh, I just forgot to mention when the camera was on the palette, uh, the colours I use are titanium white, burnt umber, alizarin crimson, cadmium red, yellow ochre, cadmium yellow, sap green, ultramarine blue and lamp black. To be honest with you, I'm a bit of a traditionalist and I'm, I, I really do not like using black if I can get away with it. It's only when I really need some really dark pastels if I use it, and even then, it's always modified with the addition of perhaps yellow ochre or burnt umber just to take off that jet black look, which is an unnatural look. So sorry, I've just realised I was painting out of shot, so now you can see what I've just done in the last 5 or 10 minutes.
this is a mixture of uh, burnt umber, sap green and yellow ochre just to bring down this uh, shadow here
The colours I'm using here for the hair are uh, burnt umber, yellow ochre and titanium white and um, on the very light parts I've replaced the uh, yellow ochre with uh, cadmium yellow.
Okay, so now we've got to tackle the dress. This ermine trim here, I've never painted fur before, so I've got no idea how this is going to turn out. Uh, on the reference photograph, I see that there is basically three tones there, and this is painted in the underpainting in a kind of a mid range tone. So we've got some low lights to put on there and some highlights. So um, here goes, let's see how it goes. And what we've got here uh, is uh, for colour wise, we're going to mix some burnt umber with some sap green because I, I detect a very, very slight greenish tinge. So I'm mixing some dark tones here. where it curls underneath, it's going to be very dark all the way around I think we might need to go a little bit darker You notice that I tend to scumble the paint on more than lay it on. It's very almost a semi-dry brush. In this way I can use the underpainting to help tone what I'm doing. The underpainting shows through and helps to get the correct tone. Now these areas here are going to be very light so I'm going to clean my brush. some white, mix some very very light same kind of colour but 
very light. And I've just noticed actually that this trim comes a lot wider down here. And I think where it gets very light, I'm going to mix some yellow ochre with that. Just to warm the white slightly. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is use my soft synthetic brush and go all over this and soften everything that I've just done. Make everything nice and soft. Like that. Yeah, I think that's that's good. Now we have some dark sp spots on there. I'm not sure what they are, but uh, I'm going to use some burnt umber mixed with uh, ultramarine blue and a little bit of green as well, sap green. See what this looks like. They look black on the photograph, but I'm not doing them jet black because I've said before that jet black looks 
so unnatural. You can actually mix a nice black with Prussian blue and a lizarin crimson. You get a nice black with that. To that I'm going to add some more little highlights here and there. Okay, I think that will do for the fur trim. And now we just need to do the top of the dress, which is, well, on the reference photograph, it's just a, a bluey grey. So I think I'll keep, keep it more of a blue though, a bit stronger blue than what's on the reference photo. And uh, for that, we'll use Ultramarine. And. A lizard in crimson. Up here we want it very dark, so we need loads of colour. And there's a very dark band all the way around here underneath this fir trim. Like so, and that gets a little bit narrower as it comes up here on the lighter side.
So that's it. Now what I'm going to do now is get again my soft synthetic brush. Just soften all this up. Rid all the brush marks. So there we have it, Rebecca Ferguson playing the part of Elizabeth Woodville, uh, a medieval consort queen of England. Uh, every painting is like going on a journey and the goal is always to get to the destination and in this case the, the painting is the destination and sometimes the road is smooth and sometimes the road is rocky. This one's been not too bad. Um, I'm not sure how much of a likeness I've managed to achieve there, only you can judge that. Um, but I enjoyed the journey and uh, I've arrived at the destination. I hope you enjoyed it and if you did, please click uh, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more of my videos in the future, please click on the subscribe button and right next to it is the notification bell. If you click on that, you'll be informed by means of a little one on your YouTube icon to tell you that I've uploaded a new video. So until next time, thanks for watching.